We the people tell the government what to do. It doesn't tell us. We the people are the driver. The government is the car. And we decide where it should go and by what route and how fast. Almost all the world's constitutions are documents in which governments tell the people what their privileges are. Hey everybody, welcome once again to yet another episode of Two Noobs Talking. It's episode 96. By now you should know who the hosts are, but I'm just going to introduce them to uh, everybody anyway. It's my good buddy John Tracy and Steve Murray. I'm Matt Craig, happy to have you guys with us. John, Chick-fil-A's coming in hot, baby. How you doing, man? What's going on? (laughs) You know, there was a player in the minor leagues with the last name Who, and he walked. So now they finally know who's on first. There you go. There you go. But I'm bummed. But I'm bummed. Mr. Steve Murray has upgraded his internet. He has now stepped into the 21st century. Steve, how you doing, man? What's going on tonight? I'm jealous of John and his Chick-fil-A. I just had uh, jalapeno mac and cheese for dinner. Oh, wow. That's amazing. There you go. So I, if had... I get some heartburn during the episode. You know. <laughs> hey, you're not the only one that might. I mean, I've got like a steak bibimbap now digesting slowly down my esophagus. It's beautiful. It's fantastic. That's what happens when we record late. We talk about our day instead of... Heck yeah, exactly. But it's always great. It's always great to be with you guys, and uh, we got another great episode on tap. But before we do, of course, we got to figure out who wore the episode number in the city of Philadelphia. And we have a few names here, uh, some familiar, some not so familiar, who wore 96. Mike Lieberthal. <laughs> Mike Lieberthal. Right, I just saw him on TV. <laughs> <laughs> What's hey, does he still here? look like he's 21? No, he's actually in the booth okay. right now, and he looks... Oh, he's aging? Oh, that's he, bad. He's aging. He looks like he's in his wow. 40s now. Yeah, because when he was 33, he still looked like he was 19. It was weird. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. It's crazy. But no, Mike Lieberfall did not wear 96 for the city of Philadelphia, but Tommy Hunter did. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, less said him. about him, the better. Good for him. He, he had an arm. Um, yeah. He was to his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that was pretty he much three things. Oh, well, John, how about Neftali Feliz? I mean, he was rookie of the year in the American League. I love the name. Yeah, heck yeah. He totally should have been like a 25 year closer for the Phillies just with that name. Yeah. Like, could you imagine and Neftali Feliz coming in the ninth like every the time? Like, this is, he was part, but he wasn't that good. So he had that one hit wonder. He was a rookie of the year and then never really did much of anything else my, I, <laughs> my dad always told me wait till you see him the second time around there you go uh, <laughs> good, good baseball acumen right there exactly second time's different hey how about we talk about benny logan john's boy uh who also wore 96 right? notre dame notre dame notre dame dude i yeah. have no affiliation with notre dame at all i think notre dame's a stupid program I just know Benny Logan went to Notre Dame. That's the craziest part about it. I know. Defensive tackle. Yeah. I know Notre Dame has the stupidest ice rink in the world, mm. since the team benches are on opposite sides of the rink. Oh, that's how cute. stupid is that? That's a, what? What is that? Uh, Nineteen ninety-two YMCA hockey league, right there. Uh, <laughs> the I mean, <laughs> the, I'm watching the guy skate up ice, and there's the Notre Dame bench, and I'm like. Okay, where's the other bench? <laughs> just like whites, we share the same bench. What's going on here? Like what's happening there? Like, where's the penalty box? The penalty box behind the goal. I mean, who knows? I mean, you know. I don't remember. That'd I was so crazy. off-put by where the benches were that I yeah, got exactly. angry and turned it off. That's it sacrilege. Weird. Very weird. Hey, guys, Super Bowl champion Derek Barnett also wears 96. Oh, but we didn't. I'm I, I, sorry for digressing, but I mean, we didn't get to talk about Benny Logan's neck, which I know. Is yeah, I know. It, it's feature. large. It's a lot. It's a Broderick. It's a Broderick Bunkley. Large. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there I like. I like. I like linemen with real thick necks. <laughs> they a, do their job better when they're when they're thick. There is a comedian okay, named uh, Dimitri Martin, and he did a sketch once, and he had a graph, and he said, "This is." On this axis was the the y axis was thickness of books read, and mm. the x axis was thickness of neck. And so as the neck got thicker, yes, the books got less. Read got yes. less until <laughs> until 
there was a turning point where it shot straight up. It's like at that point, your neck is so thick. You're like, my neck's pretty thick. I better read up on that. <laughs> I don't know where Benny Logan falls on your little scale for that. He's probably in the middle. He's he's no he's no thick like Jordan Davis, but he's you know not he's showing thick. off, not falling thick, behind, thick, man. Thick, thick, just thick enough. There you go. Not showing. It was off. sad to see him leave, but you know, hey, thanks for the memories. Exactly. John must like turkey with the neck talk. Yeah. <laughs> how fat is that turkey's neck oh yeah oh yeah hey how about we talk Pushing. about a little well, let's do a little Derek barnett love here uh you know if it wasn't for him actually like catching the ball in the super bowl yeah. we don't win the championship right i mean that was like right. that was a huge turnover unfortunately that's been his only career highlight that that's i know fine. that's fine i don't um, mind i don't mind him every once in a while running people over for no apparent reason has no idea where he is on the he's, he's fine He's fine. We're good with him. 15 yards every once yeah, in a while. We're, we're good. We're, we're good. We've got, we've got players. We're fine. He is the Odubel Herrera of. Uh, in, in a way. Eagles. Yes. Yes. I guess in a way. Thank God he was making good. strange plays, you know? Yes, exactly. But to top the list guys, we got Clyde Simmons, who of course made our top 16 best Philadelphia athlete on the Eagle side. Right. We love Clyde. Clyde was great. Played forever. He did play for Jacksonville in the 96 expansion draft, which blows my mind. He played forever, which is amazing. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Really did. Was so he, yeah, one he was the ones who went to Arizona? Arizona? I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he was yeah, he one of the first the to go to Arizona. Yeah, he joined the band. And, uh, yeah. I think it was like Seth him, and then everybody else went. And like... Yeah, they, everybody. I think Wes Hopkins played there. Andre Waters played there. <laughs> Reggie White left. They were all like, we're out. We're all just going to go <laughs> hang out with Buddy. <laughs> Forget this. Bremen's cheap. He's cheap. You know, we, can't, we can't stand Handle this. Yeah, exactly. I don't blame them at all. No. No. They were trying to catch lightning in a bottle out there and fortunately never struck. So there you go. Yeah, I don't it is a desert. Yeah. I don't blame them at all. They do have the coolest football field, though, now. Oh, they yeah. They take that thing out, the sun it. It's weird. And they bring it back in. It's yep. crazy. Yeah. It's the future. Yeah, really apparently. Cool. Hey, speaking of the future, guys, let's introduce topic number one with this one and uh, this is very very interesting i want to get us talking a little bit um exclusive yahoo news article here outside of los angeles written by tim reed former republicans and democrats form new third u.s political party um written july 27th dozens of former republican and democratic officials announced on wednesday a new national political third party to appeal to millions of voters they say are dismayed with what they see as America's dysfunctional two-party system. The new party is called Forward. Interesting. Um, it's a dumb name. I, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it doesn't it's even be sound expensive. Co-chaired by Andrew Yang, who was the former Democratic president yeah. of the Senate, and Christine Todd Whitman, uh, former Republican governor of New Jersey. Who did an okay job in Garden State? Well, really, you can't really hate on those Jersey governors. They they were they were, eh. yeah. <laughs> they, they, so, helped. <laughs> they helped. <laughs> so this apparently they were there. this apparently uh, this merger involves the Renew America movement formed in 2021 by dozens of former officials in the Republican administrations of Ronald Reagan, George H W Bush, George W Bush, and Donald Trump. Uh, the forward, the forward party founded by Yang, who left the Democrat Party in 2021, became an independent. Mm-hmm. And the Serve America movement, a group of Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, whose executive director is former Republican Congressman David Jolly. So it kind of gives you a little bit of the breakdown. Um, believe it or not, Steve brought this article, so I'm going to go to Mr. Murray. <laughs> on this one why is this such a shocker because i love to get your thoughts on it that's why it's such a shocker but yeah go ahead and talk to us steve like what are your initial thoughts on it i, I think it has some promise maybe well look i founded my party two <laughs> three years ago there you go yeah didn't get the traction i was hoping for yeah. um i'm all for mm-hmm. a third party um that you know, represents the middle of us that don't want anything to do with 
the Trumps and the <laughs> Bernie Sanderses of the world, mm-hmm. um, you know, who who think either that government is there to, well, actually, both of them want government to rule your life, even though they may say different. Mm. Um, I, I I hope that this the name is stupid. I agree with John. Oh, yeah. they, they, they could have totally. <laughs> Marketing is terrible. Yeah, it was awful. Um, they probably were consulting with the same people who came up with Washington Commanders. Pretty much. But uh, I think I think it's just a dime a dozen when it comes to Washington D.C. Probably, probably. But I I would love to see this succeed and gain traction and actually put some pressure on the uh, on the other two parties. I mean, it's. It's gotten so bad, right? That Dick Cheney mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is lambasting Trump. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. Yeah. I mean, have we really gotten to that point? Yeah. We, yeah, we have. We have. Pretty much. Uh, I, yes, we have. Uh, no, yeah. We literally have. It's, yeah. it's crazy. I it's, would love to have a party that's down the middle. Yeah. To, to you know. The two wings have gotten too far afield, in my opinion, and I would love to, because I feel like everybody I meet is in there. Yeah, I know yeah. very few people who are way over here, and very few people who are way I, over here. I totally agree. I really don't see, from what the media is saying, that it is so far left and right. I don't see that on my day to day. It's not. It's really not. Everybody, like I, I was telling you guys, I was at a work party. Everybody has the same, had literally had the same political view as like, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. That's their political view. Yeah. Just, just shut up and go away. Cause we don't, we, we want you to do what you're elected to do make laws, build us roads, fix our, you know, handicap ramps, make sure our lights work and shut the fuck up pretty much. <laughs> That's what we want you to do. Ooh. Yeah. So a party that would actually do that would be great. Oh, it'd be massive. Yeah, it would be absolutely massive. It's interesting here in the article, guys, the leaders cited a Gallup poll. I'm assuming the leaders of this forward party cited a Gallup poll last year showing a record two thirds of Americans believe a third party is needed. I've always clamored for one. I think it would be great to kind of siphon some things off and kind of shake it up a little bit. That's what the founders intended. It would, it would help. It certainly would. I've I mean, been the, an independent most of my life. Um, George Washington being the only it. exception. Washington would being the only exception, fearing that factions would form, and of course they did, literally right well, after his second term. That's um, oh, but that's oh, that's you're always, always going to have that. Yeah. I like more heads in the game. Yeah, I want people representing us, so we have a say. Mm-hmm. Because if we're just going to let those two, you know, nutcase parties do nutcase things, we're going to get nutcase results like we have now. Because yeah. Joe Biden, what is he, 80? Like, an 80-year-old man in the Senate got elected president. Yeah. President. Like, we don't have a pool of people. Like, we don't have anybody at this point. We yeah. need to interject because let's just say we start a party. And what if that party... Factions do start, but what if some of the independent party infiltrates both of the parties and you get a broader perspective mm-hmm. on life? We might actually get a president that would help us do stuff, create stuff. It, you have to, it, it has to start in the, it, all sports leagues do it. Yeah. You need to do your draft pool. Not everybody is the greatest player, but they can develop into it when they're influenced. Mm-hmm. The same thing, but yeah. they've been so against having us as people be involved. Mm-hmm. That's been why we're not. That's why we want it. Yeah, exactly. My my fear is that you know we, we, this is just going to turn into another Ross Perot. You know. Yeah, like, I mean that that was my first, be... when you said it. That was my first. I'm like, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to relive the '90s. Like, I'm like politically, when we don't need to. But like he gets a sizable contingent, but not enough to actually kind of make a difference. Exactly. That's, you know, yeah. that's what my fear. What I'm hoping for, not expecting, what I'm hoping for is that we're fed up at that we're we're all at this age where we're like, you know, we might vote for an independent because we don't like it. We know we don't like you, and we know we don't like you. Absolutely. So if someone could bring to the bring I'm, something to the table. 
I yeah. mean, Ross Burrow might have not been the best. Hey, was he a better candidate than the two? Oh, yes. Man. But <laughs> the media also, the media was against him because two-party system. Yeah. And it's always been that way for mm-hmm. years and decades, centuries, really, ever since the founding of the country. Um, it's interesting here, Forward, this, they got rebranded. I totally yeah. agree. You guys, Re-brand. Forward Re-brand. is not exactly... The Washington Commanders and Forward need to stop. Yeah, yeah just stop. <laughs> like, why can't why can't Forward be the Washington Commanders? <laughs> and then we'll just give the Forward name to the Washington Commanders because we don't really care about that. Exactly. Look, I thought my party name was actually pretty good. You know, the yeah. Common Sense Party. <laughs> that, sense. It really puts it, you know, <laughs> right on there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they aim to gain party registration and ballot access in 30 states by the end of 2023. That's a very aggressive goal, if you want to ask me, guys. It know. is. That's... And then they want to be in all 50 states by the by late 2024, in time for the presidential and congressional election. Yeah. Pretty, Makes sense. Pretty strong. Hey, if they can do it, you know, and and put forth a decent candidate, absolutely. Get it in there, absolutely. And you have a three-way debate. I'm all for that. At a time, too, guys, and this is really interesting. This is an Axios poll I'm going to throw up here. At a time, really, when it's really, really bad. Uh, survey mm-hmm. of 850 college students conducted nationwide in mid to late November 2021. The question was, college students who would not blank someone who voted for the opposing presidential candidate. So they give you, like... Please fill in that blank quickly. Yeah, that's it. Please fill in that blank, like, immediately. <laughs> right? The first blank is, go out on a date with. 71% of Democrats voted saying that they would not go out on a date with someone who voted for the opposing presidential candidate. 71% of Democrats. Republicans, 31%. Um, college, students, freedom. college students who would not shop at or support a business of someone who voted for the opposing presidential candidate. Democrat, 41%. Republican, 7%. I would think it would be the other way. Yeah, college the Republicans students, are all about the the the, the boycott. This it's both of them. It's boycott and boycott. Yeah, I know, yeah. but they, they yell boycott like every time. Every time. I thought it would be way higher on the Republicans. Well, yeah, but I mean, just look what you're eating tonight. Yeah. Okay, that yeah. the Democrats have boycotted that. So yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. People. All the way down there. Yeah. I like all the way down there. I will. I will. I will eat it. Exactly. <laughs> then this one really troubles me, gentlemen. Uh, college students who would not be friends with someone who voted for the op- opposing presidential candidate. How the hell are you ever going to grow? Republican five percent. Democrat thirty-seven. How are you ever going to grow? I don't know. Not John. seeing. Uh, not seeing someone. You don't have to agree. Like. I've been an independent my whole life. I've been friends with Republicans. I've been friends with Democrats. I've been friends with extreme liberals. Mm-hmm. I might think you're batshit crazy, mm. but at least I know where you stand because I'm willing to have a conversation. Exactly. You're just you're just gonna turn into what we already have, Muppets. If you're not if you're not seeking other views, you're gonna be what's on TV right now. Yeah. The fucking Muppet game. I remember there was a great example of this, Johnny, um, Charlie Kirk. Now, I'm not a big fan of Charlie Kirk, to be perfectly honest. But it was Turning Point USA, and they're mm-hmm. politically conservative. Yeah. The answer or the question that he was posing to people was, can you define what an assault rifle is? Talking about gun control, whatever. Mm-hmm. And this leftist could not answer the question. Now, if someone is asking you a question and having a genuine conversation, that's one thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that person knew who Charlie Kirk was and was just giving Charlie Kirk a hard time, which I think that was the point. possibly could be. But if you're having a genuine conversation with somebody, you answer the question. This is what I believe an assault rifle is. You have, you know, it's a long gated rifle. Rifle is long, you know, that kind of deal. You be as descriptive as you possibly can. Yeah. Along Look. those lines. But. My further point, I'll just, uh, before I toss it over to Steve, my further point is this. I've got a great, a good friend of mine that lives across the way, my buddy Steve. He's left mm-hmm. the center. And I've known the guy for close to 20 years. And we, every once in a while, we'll talk politics, but we have conversations about it. We don't, there are times he'll rant and rave about Trump. And I'm like, dude, 
like he's over and done with, right? I mean, he's out of office now. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, well, he's still being a da 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 da. And I'm thinking, like, dude, you don't have to feed the monster. Steve made that point what, a couple weeks yeah. ago. You don't have to feed the monster. Just ignore him. Just ignore the bastard. You know, the whole bit. So. You that's not like, you have good it's not like he's readily available at this exactly. point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Playing golf every day. Steve, your your point. I'll yield the time to you. Yeah, I mean, the, the point I was just going to make is that uh, what you'll find a lot of the times is the people who get really, really dug in mm -hmm. when you actually, like, probe it. Mm -hmm. They can't even really justify why they're taking the position that they are with yeah. legitimate rationale. Exactly. It's people people are are coming into these beliefs and they're just taking them in as is and not kind of questioning, well, why should I believe it that way? And I, I think it's really tearing people apart because as this poll is showing you, people aren't willing to be friends with people who, I mean, this, this question really irked me because it's like, I would hope that these people who answered this question this way mm -hmm. would consider at least finding out why you voted for that presidential mm -hmm. candidate of the other party. Because not everybody who voted for Trump is like a hood wearing KKK member. Yeah. Okay. Not everybody who wants to vote for Bernie Sanders is uh, Vladimir Lenin. <laughs> <You know? laughs> exactly. It, you know, I, do, people... I do have one caveat to the whole thing. If you did vote for Hillary, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> See, there goes it's John the proving the point on the poll. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you don't you don't know why. Unless you ask why these people voted for who they did, and they may have perfectly legitimate reasons. Absolutely, I know. I considered. know many people that have voted very different ways over the last ten years. That I can't like their rationale is their rationale. It, they, it makes sense to them, and it's how they want to live their life. So you can't. That's not a political argument. You just got to respect the person for the person at that Heck point. Yeah. Heck yeah. Because exactly. I can't, I can't like like you, you firmly believe this. That's you, awesome, and, and you, you do you. Life that way. Exactly, you do you. I would say then also to caveat to Steve's point as well. I would say the problem too is when you add emotional attachment mm -hmm. to said argument that you don't really follow, right? And then all of a sudden, like, oh, I've invested so much emotional capital into it. So when someone comes at me with a question they take it as an assault mm -hmm. on their personal belief and they get very very defensive and that's very defensive and that's the problem you have to look beyond the emotional attachment you have to think of this you have to think and rationally, rationally think it out well, it's really hard with the two candidates we were talking about before oh it is <laughs> it's not no, very you're rational right, either. Johnny, you're right on the money no you're right on the money because it's like it gets, it could get to a point where, and I'll know, I've said this before on the podcast. I think with you, John, um, back in '96, I uh, was, you know, part of a Republican mm -hmm. uh, campaign for a House seat in Montgomery County, mm -hmm. and I was handing out notepads to people at this July Fourth, you know, July Fourth get together. I think it was in West Hicken somewhere. And I'm passing them out. Some people say, "No, thank you. I don't want it." Oh yeah, I'll take it. You know, I had the guy's name on it on on the notepads. I give it to the, the one other guy. I say, hey, do you want a notepad by said person? He's like, no, I want him to have a heart attack and die in office, straight faced. Wow. And I thought, <laughs> whoa, you want to talk about like emotional attachment to wish someone to die? Yeah, that's weird. And that was I before remember, the remember. advent of social media and before the advent of all this bullshit that we have now. I mean, it's crazy the amount. Of I remember me and you talking about that. Like it was no. that was <laughs> neither of us. We were very young in the pot and the political game at that point. It was weird that people held that kind of. Yeah. I mean, I don't like Joe Biden, but yeah, exactly. you know, I want. If nothing else, I want him to successfully navigate this country Heck yeah. through all the challenges that we are facing and yeah. will face. I want him to succeed mm -hmm. as far as getting our country you know, it's to where it needs to be. Some of his policies I won't agree with, but I want him to, as president, I want the office to succeed. 
yes, do what it's supposed to do. Yes. No, I'm not. I'm not wishing a heart attack on the guy. But that's, that's civic. But that's that? civic pride, and that's gone. Yeah. We so need to get that back, just, Johnny. Yeah. Now it's just arguments about things. Mm -hmm. the, the, the civic pride would be. It doesn't matter who's in the odds. I didn't like Clinton at all. I didn't like him at all, but he he's the only one in the office at that point. You don't wish death upon him. No. The funny thing is, guys, ever since I moved into my condo here, in uh, that was in 2006, I have not had a single presidential vote <laughs> go my way. And yet I'm doing pretty good for myself, knock on wood. It, well, exactly. You exactly. know, and it's like, and it's not because... I think sports teams don't win team. every year. It's it, you're not gonna. It, it, huh. You shouldn't take, especially the seat of the presidency. You should not take as a badge of honor because your guy won. It's it's not how it works. Exactly. Your guy's an asshole. First of all. Yeah. Um. He. And that's Floyd. how he got there. And Floyd. Yeah. He's uh, not... Tons of corporate money behind mm -hmm. said people. Mm -hmm. That's what we've got to really. That's what the third party's about. We gotta remove that. We gotta get these general ideas where we can all work together. We yeah. can all help each other. Look yeah. to, to to back to what Matt had said earlier. Um, you can't govern based on emotion. Nope. Yeah, I don't think you can vote based on emotion. Nope. Nope. I, you can't legislate but hurt. No, that's right. That's right. That's but I, I think more and more people are doing exactly that. They have, they're putting emotion into everything they do, mm -hmm. and, and it's just not the way you're supposed to govern a country. You no. just, exactly. just can. The more we get away from the emotional capital in our politics, right. the better it's going to be, and we rationally think it out. Yep. Gents, topic number two, and why don't we talk a little bit more science on this one? Uh, and this is a very interesting article brought to us again by Mr. Steve Murray. Whoa, whoa, I only brought one of these. Well, then who brought this one? Oh, and you just booked the show. It's, it's, I, yeah, I was just going to say, like, Steve's booking this entire show. Why not? Steve is the new Hunter Hearst Helmsley. <laughs> <laughs> He's fully in control of creative. He's fully in control of creative. Look, I can't help it if you guys are slacking on bringing articles to the pre-production. You know and I mean? talent relations, Johnny. I mean, he might be got, you know, I, might be doing that, too. Who knows? You know how busy I am that I have to put something together and Photoshop for you guys for like 12 minutes of my day? <laughs> you. God, you're working me too hard. Crazy. Experts at odds over nuclear power's role in fighting climate change. So why don't we talk about a little nuclear power here? We got two articles. Oh, talk about this everything you know about nuclear power. Yeah, since we want to put a the nuclear power is... plant on the moon, why don't we talk about it here on Earth first? Uh, the role nuclear power can or should play in helping the world reduce uh, carbon emissions is hotly debated. Many climate hawks see nuclear which generates about 19% of the electricity in the United States as a necessary bridge to helping the global economy transition to renewable sources of energy. Uh, and then it talks about John Kerry, who is blowing. Is an idiot. Um, Microsoft founder Bill Gates also supports expanding nuclear power. He's also an idiot. But <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to imagine a future where we can decarbonize our power grid affordably without having, without using more nuclear power, Gates said. He started a company to build, build small nu modular nuclear reactors, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Hmm. In much of Europe, however, nuclear power is seen as an old way of thinking about energy systems. Um, embarking on more nuclear power plants uh, requires huge startup costs, conservative time frame of a decade or more between groundbreaking and electricity delivery. Uh, so, I mean, let's talk about this, guys. Um, you know, the debates between nuclear power and electricity, uh, you know, the carbon footprint and, you know, the solar panels that are everywhere. Uh, you seem to find out. I know I w when I was traveling in the Netherlands, you saw the solar panels everywhere, everywhere on the farmland. Um, the Netherlands also had that really cool, um, they use the wind power, but they, instead of putting it on land, they put it out where the wind is. Hmm. Um, and 
wow, what an amazing concept. Yeah. <laughs> Using yeah. a windmill where there's wind. Of course, Jeez. whenever you whenever you talk about a nuclear power plant, you automatically think of Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. That's exactly yeah, what media I mean, wants you to think. There's Every time I see a nuclear power plant, I think of The Simpsons. <laughs> but that's just it's great. Like I, I, I used to play uh, Limerick Golf Course when you would you'd get the thirteen, and the nuclear power plant would be right there every time. The Simpsons theme. You have a homer going go in my brain. Fly. I couldn't pick a golf club until the whole thing played in my head every time. Every time. <laughs> you see, I had to stop playing, in. of course, because that's ridiculous. Like, yeah. well, I don't so like John. The Simpsons John, you just showed that only people who are fearful think of Chernobyl whenever they see it. That's mm. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, Do we I don't think know, that nuclear I, I power is going to have... Go ahead, Johnny. I'm sorry. Go I ahead. understand nuclear power. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as much of as a threat as we were once mm -hmm. um, conditioned to think of it when we were younger. Like it's not, it, 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 It's got its advantages. It sure does. Yeah, it sure does. And probably should be used a lot more, along with my my climate change thing is really easy. Do things that work in places where it works. <laughs> like wind power in the Netherlands, genius. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's not in fucking South Texas. <laughs> like it's not going to work. The wind doesn't do the things that it does. In <laughs> I'm all about climate change. I just want the smart people to talk about climate change, yeah. not the ones yeah, that not the mentioned lunatics already. that don't. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so, Steve, what are your what are your thoughts on this? Like, um, I know it's a hotly debated issue. Obviously, um, I know I have like for me, every once in a while, I, like it's like maybe about twenty miles away, we have the Limerick power plant up here, mm -hmm. and. You know, there's all the whole, you know, it goes through its whole testing, you know, and it fires off, you know, like a huge warning sign of like, okay, we're going through our normal testing now. And, it, you know, you hear it at two o'clock. It's like this alarm. You can't miss it. And it goes away. And it's like, okay. That's got to be a lot. I couldn't handle that. Oh, it's annoying as hell. My anxiety could not handle that. All within a two mile radius of the yeah, entire. What if they ground. messed up? Like, what if oh, it, it was, it, what if, what if Bob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I what mean? if Homer? <laughs> yeah, what if Bob just had a bad day? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. God help us all. Uh, Steve, go ahead and uh, what are your thoughts on it? Um, go ahead and bring the sanity here. Yeah, right. put look, the catch up on the meat, baby. We're not, talking, we're, not talking, <laughs> we're not talking about Bob screwing his job look, up. Look, I think it's absolutely right. You you need to have if you want to get off of carbon, uh, you mm -hmm. know, coal and petroleum and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um. You're going to need, at least on the short term, to lean heavily on nuclear because nuclear is the most efficient power producing yep, um, yep. technique that we have as of right now. No, that's right. Wind doesn't always blow. Mm -hmm. Sun doesn't always shine, but mm -hmm. you can always shoot some neutrons into a uranium rod. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and solar panels are Got a pretty good success rate on that, too. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Solar panels are wildly inefficient. Yeah. Uh, windmills are, you know, unless, like John said, unless you're, the wind is constantly blowing, they're not going to be reliably sourced. Mm -hmm. um, For the consistent power in which we need on our grid. Yes, That's right. the one thing that people are not, in the climate change, are not talking about that. Like, no. it's not. It's not that it can't happen. Because if anybody looks at a windmill, wind blows, it blows electricity, right? But mm -hmm. at the level that we yeah, right. need that windmill to go, doesn't work out really well. Such a but massive if you, point. If you want to wean off until you can reliably get sustainable power, mm -hmm. you're going to need to rely on something like nuclear that can produce massive amounts of power with little amounts of fuel without the carbon uh output mm -hmm. you know and, and i find it hilarious that we're we're having this conversation 50 years after we already had not us but already had this conversation <laughs> so we never did anything <laughs> we're, just, we're still debating <laughs> nuclear <laughs> like, well what you have to you have to think europe uh, after Fukushima happened, Europe panicked and pulled the plug on a bunch of their nuclear power plants, and now some of them are regretting it. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't you? Uh, no. Really? 
Like the, with, with those with those disasters in the eighties. That's Chernobyl. I, I can I can disaster. Honor. Okay, how many disasters are we talking about? Only two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. One of which, Three Mile Island, wasn't actually that big of a disaster. No, that was, no. That Chernobyl was, was the only real disaster, and that's because the Soviets are were idiots. Are yeah. shit at running <laughs> nuclear power plants. Okay. Fair, fair, fair point. Fukushima. <laughs> Fukushima is just an unfortunate result of kind of where Japan is geographically. Yeah. Ring of um, fire. Yeah. It, you know they're they're right on the ring of fire, so they're subject to earthquakes sure. and a tsunami, and that's what happened. And it's it's unfortunate, and hopefully we can learn from that and build better reactors. But yeah. uh, new, see, the, this article said Europe pulled the plug on a bunch of the reactors, decommissioned them, and now some of them are regretting it, regretting it because they're they've they've got power deficiencies. And well, if we had that nuclear reactor running, well, we would have oh, had it might work out. Shock. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. So you have to, you, th- again, emotion. Emotion. Yes. They let fear mm-hmm. govern whether or not they were going to let their nuclear reactors keep on going. And mm-hmm. here they are 10 years later, and they feel they, some of them feel like they made a mistake. Yeah, yeah. But also, I, to, to their point, did anybody really see this power grid? blowing up like it did like the amount of electronics we use per household oh. at this point is quadruple to what was what, what, what in the 80s like that's like we're pulling a lot more power now yes but also at the same time johnny we're also being more efficient in terms of our electricity. well yeah well led lights are led are, lights are have a lot to do with that yes ever. Yeah, and uh, high efficiency it, items that you find in your dishwashers, yeah. refrigeration units, things along those lines have really done a huge. And the washing machines, for God's sake. But my my question is, we didn't we we knew there was going to be a tech boom, mm-hmm. but I don't think we knew it was going to be, you know, this level. every child has an iPad at well, this point. Like, yeah, but I don't think I don't think in the last ten years you've seen. I would agree from like the year two thousand. Yeah, so that's, now, a, that's more. Yeah, what that's I'm, huge. That, but the yeah. last ten years? No, last ten I mean, years, it's actually less. Yeah, yeah, but that's did, when we... that's when a lot of these power plants were decommissioned. Okay, point, okay, right. So mm-hmm. they 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 were scared. Mm-hmm. Oh God, our power plant's going to melt down because you know I don't know what. Because Homer said so. Right. <laughs> but our power plant's going to melt down. We better shut them down. But you didn't have a reliable backup to provide your power for you. Yeah, see, and it's it turned out to be a bad decision. Yeah, exactly. And now you have rolling brownouts and things along mm-hmm. those lines in the summer months. Yeah, I mean that you start to think about that a little bit more. But there is interesting news on the horizon, guys, and there, it's it's interesting. An article here by Marsha Wendorf: There could be a nuclear reactor in your backyard soon. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission has approved that sounds new... expensive it, it sure does <laughs> has approved new scale powers designed for a small modular reactor or smr and this newest reactor under service is tennessee's watts barn unit 2 which began operation in june of 2016 and so what it is it's the designed um they have basically approved designs by a portland oregon based new scale power company for the use of a new type of reactor called a small modular reactor, or SMR. They're intended to be built quickly in a factory rather than on site and have a lower cost, provide or and also produce much less power, tend to be safer than traditional nuclear reactors. The design, I'm going to throw it up here on screen, it's a great art artistic uh, rendition here. The design is for a 9 feet diameter by 65 feet high reactor vessel. Okay, so this is not in your backyard. No, it's not. <laughs> this is not going to fit next to your grill. Okay, this, uh, is, no. not, this is not every household's going to have a garage and a chicken and a and nuclear reactor. And a small reactor. compact okay. nuclear reactor. No. All right. It yeah. weighs 650 short tons or 590 metric tons. So it's I'm going to have to get rid of my smoker garage. just to put this thing in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really. The modules can be delivered by rail, barge, or even by truck, believe it or not. 
don't get into an accident if it's in a truck because they're gonna they're gonna start throwing throwing them at us with drones as soon as they say that they're going to transport them all those ways drones are just right behind oh yeah 100 percent. oh we figured out how to lift it and the, drop it right on you the the smr will run on 4.95 percent enriched uranium 235 fuel assemblies God, I hope that will need to be refueled this. every two years thoughts on that guys that's very- well you know i'm sure in 10 years I'm uranium really- 235 is going to be available in every drug corner drugstore but uh <laughs> here in 2022 really it's a little con- hard to come by i'm really confused on how this nine Are foot you- by 65 foot backyard um <laughs> <laughs> reactor that's going to be delivered by a train or a plane or a drone we, we haven't figured all that out yet yeah but what 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 this is why it sounds expensive they still haven't told us what it is it's really amazing well <laughs> Further well, on, I should mention this. The SMR is intended to be kept in below-ground pools with a concrete lid in order to absorb the shock of any possible earthquakes. If AC power is lost to the normal cooling systems, the water in the pool is intended to absorb heat and boil. Because of this, the reactor does not need a backup power source, which also helps to keep costs low. That seems, that seems to work. But am I enrich, enriching my own uranium? Like, am I, do, am I doing what they don't want Iran to do? Hmm. Like that's my question. Well, this is this is now that you've explained the article to me, mm. this makes a lot more sense uh, and actually addresses the anti-nuclear concern from the first article, mm-hmm. which was, well, it takes ten years from when you actually break ground to when you actually get the power thing online. Yeah, uh, and it's it's super expensive. If they're going to be able to crank these things off an assembly line, mm-hmm. transport them. And install Safely. them. It'll it'll be installed quicker, mm-hmm. uh, less money. So that's actually going to solve a lot of the problems that the anti nuclear people are complaining about. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that, it actually dovetail. I you know when you first brought the article, I'm like, oh, we're gonna have, I'm gonna have a power plant in my backyard, <laughs> <laughs> right next to your grill. Yeah, you know, that kind of a deal. You never know. Um, just a little bit different on how they different or how they differ from a traditional nuclear power plant. A traditional plant can generate over 1,000 megawatts of electricity. 600 megawatts is enough to power a mid-sized city. New scale, the SMR design can generate up to 50 megawatts of power. However, multiple SMRs can be combined to scale up power generation. So they're basically saying like the more of these they have in circulation. Gather them around. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So they're thinking um, that by between 2023 and 2041, they expect to sell between 674 and 1682 of its reactors to the market. So we'll see, see how it goes. That could um, that could solve the brownouts in LA in no time. And that's what we kind of need, really. Just have to think about it. Control yourself over there, Sorry. Steve. Come on. Now. I got to get some Chick Fil A off my my stash. Oh, What's happening over here? I gotta think I'm all right. Topic three, gents. As we move and roll right along, with episode ninety six. Uh, let's talk a little slackers that exist in Google and Facebook. Uh, no, no. Oh. This may have something to do with COVID and <clears throat> working from home. Um, I don't know. Oh, I knew it, John. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. He, I knew when he brought this article, he was going to turn this to shitting on working at home. I knew I'm it. I'm joking. That is up. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Google Facebook CEOs warn slackers what it means. Well, what it means is you have people that aren't doing work and they should be fired, to be perfectly honest. Fox Business, come on. Um, the chief executives of Alphabet and Meta Platforms, who are the parent companies of Google and Facebook, uh, and major heavy hitters in the tech, war- tech world, are warning underperforming employees to step it up, baby, drawing concern for potential layoffs amid the continued economic downturn. Just thought, real quick. I, I how thought is that's this what different- happened. How is, yeah, how is this different from any other business when you have people who underperform and they get warned? Well, the fact that it's in an article with Facebook and Google that this is the first time that they're actually facing this, I don't know. Is it? Is it? Well, moving on, I mean, further on in the article, I would say so because Zuckerberg, John's boy, 
Um, He's an alien. With a great quote saying, just kind of turning up the heat a little bit. You got to love that as a quote from your CEO. Just kind of turning up the heat? Like, what What the... He's not in the office, so I don't even <laughs> <laughs> I <didn't> say that. <laughs> Face, Facebook's company's advertising revenue suffered its first revenue decline in its history. Um, so he told his staffers last week his hope is to raise expectations and have more aggressive goals. That's very interesting because... Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but Facebook's main at, main source of revenue is advertising. Mm-hmm. And if advertising is, it. yeah, advertising is being cut back. Isn't that on the CEO to kind of think of like other streams of revenue? Just thinking out loud here. Uh, I don't know. Well, you know you, or wait, not you, have a company that's so one-dimensional. Uh, I mean, that it could be. That could be. That could be something that would work. I don't yeah. know. I'm not talking but that was the thought that went through my head was <laughs> okay you you had a downturn in revenue your revenue primarily comes from ad you know sell sales mm-hmm. are the people underperforming because they're not selling are they not meeting sales quotas or you know is this really on underperforming employees uh, I don't know doesn't really say but yeah one would think I if you put all of your eggs in one basket as a business, that that's not very good either. Unless you know exactly what you're doing, and you keep cranking it out, um, you know, at some point you got to think of other streams of revenue besides ads. Um, just throwing that out there for for Mark to, to think about, um, since it might help him. He can't think. I can. <laughs> Same problem is also happening with Google here. Revenue growth at Google during the past quarter decelerated to its slowest pace in two years as advertisers reined in their spending amid intensifying fears of an economic recession. Second quarter revenue rose 13% this year at Google compared to 62% in last year's comparable quarter. Last year, of course, being 2021. Um, These notices are signals of potential layoffs could lead to greater unemployment, fewer available jobs, lower wage growth, etc., uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, and that that ad with the Google stuff, that's when you type in something. Mm-hmm. There's three, two to three ads before you get to what you actually Googled. Mm-hmm. That's how they make their money. Yeah. So that's and obviously, <clears throat> if people aren't Googling Trump anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? That might have an effect. Who was losing revenue. money? Yeah. I got to understand. <laughs> exactly. and they're mad at their employees for it. It's weird. Yeah. Well, everybody's cutting back. I mean, you know, inflation being a chief driver yeah. right now, 9%. And I don't think people Google things anymore. I don't think so. I, think I disagree. I Google things all the time. Oh, I, me too. Me too. But I, th- I don't think, I don't think we're the, I don't think we're the majority. Because that's like we came from that weird generation where we like sit down and we we may have a free thought on the internet. I think there's an app for everything now. We're just too old to understand it. Like there's literally an app for everything. You don't have to Google anything. Uh, it's well, weird. If that's the case, John. Uh, I would yeah. love to know if there's an you know if there's an app for I don't know. Um, I'm trying to even think what an app. Trust me, is. if you could think of it, there's an app for it. <laughs> <laughs> that app store has like a gazillion. I mean, there is a lot. Yeah, there's apps. a ton. Some of them are not so good. It's like 17 duplicates of the same. Uh, well, okay, yeah, but who who runs one of the major app stores? Google. Yes. Okay, yeah. so there you're making revenue there because people are probably. Well, paying it, they're to, smarter than Zuckerberg because at least they have they have Gmail that helps. Well, <laughs> they have a couple things. <laughs> Did they, I mean, Zuckerberg clearly came out and said, our employees need to perform better. Did Google say the same thing? Or is it just, we're making less money, that might mean we got to take a haircut? Yeah, it, I think that's pretty much it, uh, Steve. I think for what I see here, just just verifying it. Uh, is this lack of days media? They just ri- they just grabbed Google. They're like, oh, fa- yeah. Facebook's having trouble. <laughs> well, it's just like Google is too. Well, I mean, it, you know, if if it's just Google facing the reality that they're not bringing in as much money, therefore they can't afford to pay hmm. all their employees, and they might have to lay them off. That's one thing. It's another thing when you have a down cycle and your CEO immediately turns and blames the employees. Goes Darth Vader on everybody for no reason. <laughs> right. 
the um you all suck yeah exactly <laughs> your business model sucks dude <laughs> like, it has nothing to do with your employees you all suck why haven't you liked me yet Maybe Facebook is an app that literally turns it when you click it it turns itself on and you look at what people do yeah like that's all the app there's nothing to it and this... you got this messenger thing when you know yeah. You don't feel like sending a text message. You can send a, you can send a messenger, but nobody does that. This uh the Google CEO issued similar concerns, similar to Zuckerberg, obviously. He told staffers last week that there are quote real concerns that our productivity as a whole is not where it needs to be for the headcount we have. The moment I hear headcount we have, I'm out nice. the door. I'm out the door immediately. I'm getting my resume yeah, together and it's like <laughs> I'll volunteer myself to get the hell out of there. Thank you very much. Uh, even if I am very productive, I don't want to get caught. I've been there before. I don't want to live through something like that again, gents. I don't know about you. Well, okay. So he's still he's still talking about underperforming employees now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, Alphabet has is much more diversified yeah. in what they do. So I could see where... Mm -hmm unproductive people in certain parts of the industry could be yeah. you know, legit. Oh yeah. As opposed to somebody just didn't make enough sales because people aren't spending money anymore. And it's somehow the salesman's fault. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You can't blame the salespeople all the time, even though they, you know, they're not to be trusted all the time. I used to hate that. I, you know, when I worked at the yeah. toy store, yep. I became an assistant manager at one point mm -hmm. and there was a thing in the back. It was a sheet that showed by day what the sales were a year ago on that day. And then what we would fill in for the sales of that day this year. Mm -hmm. And I always thought it was the stupidest thing to be comparing sales on the same day, the previous year, because you don't know what factors went into, you know, what if it snowed that day and we closed three hours <laughs> yeah, early? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. We, we, yeah. my, when I first started working in the Boeing industry, my first manager, like one of my first mentors, um, taught me amazing things because you can't just take numbers from last year and yeah. put it with this year. Because in the Boeing industry, what do you need to know? What the weather was. Because if it's 95 degrees, mm -hmm. who's, you know what I mean? Who's in No, your family's going to go to the park. Mm -hmm. yeah, no, day. no, 95 well, degrees, I, I am going to the bowling I, alley. We've become, <laughs> We've become a little softer. So if it's 85 and sunny, we'll go to the park. park. 95, you're indoors immediately. Yeah. Yes. But if oh, it yeah. rains, that's always a big, that's a business, that's a big business day for everybody. No doubt. Convenience stores, that's, yeah. Because people just get and go because they don't want to be out in the rain. Nobody wants to be hanging out in the rain. Let yeah. me get my popcorn and watch a movie. Yeah. What if there was a sale that day a year ago that's Very not true. in effect? Yep. You know, but that wasn't year. on that little sheet. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. It exactly. doesn't sound like Zuckerberg knows how to run his one dimensional business at yeah. all. And him getting mad about it seems really well, weird to me. Kind of mad about it. <laughs> like, he's a little he's a little upset. Yeah. So, I can see so... him pacing around kicking a can in his office. Like... <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't have a one dimensional business and you won't I'm be I'm so mad. bad at my job, I can't figure out <laughs> other ways to raise revenue. Damn it. Well, I'm only going to make six it. billion dollars this year instead of <laughs> instead of ten. God damn it! He needs to learn. Do what Vanilla Ice did. He owned a uh, he owned one of those uh, Wave Runner shops, and then he became a, a master in lawn care. Um, just do that. Do other stuff, Zuckerberg. Leave us alone. But that's the thing, Johnny. I, you know, you made a great point pre production. I Facebook. How long are they going to be alive? To be perfectly honest. I mean, you know, if they continue down this path where it's like now all of a sudden their ad revenues could be cut and they can't think of alternative measures or alternative ways. So many, to people, so many people are doing other things on yeah. their phone. They're not. You might as well acquire somebody and not necessarily organically grow, but the days of organic growth, I don't know, maybe you're. Well, they tried it with Instagram and that, that obviously is one dimensional and isn't working well for him either because. Yeah. Because again, what are they known it's for? They're all known ad, for their all ad, ad revenue. revenue. Yeah, it's all ad revenue. Yeah. That's any. That's going to be any social media site. Mm -hmm. Is unless you are unless you are a paid, you know, requiring paid membership, which I would yeah. never sign up for. No, no, I don't think many people would. 
you, no. unless you're going to do that, the only way you're going to make money on social media is through advertising. Yeah. That's just going to be the way it is. I mean, and that's the thing. That's a great point, Steve, because I think those days, the, that idea of a paid subscription service at Facebook, I think that was long ago. That should have been instituted a long time ago. You know, from maybe when you first yeah. launch it. But yeah. it would have probably buried, features, it probably but... would have buried the company before it started. Absolutely. Probably, probably, yeah. That's also a thought too. Yeah. All right, guys. Closing out two noobs episode ninety six with our fourth topic, and of course, it is the two noobs tournament of the best Philadelphia athlete. Region number seven of eight. We are so close to ending the main big brackets before we hit the elite eight. Um, it's been great to do it with both of you guys, of course, as we continue to uh, trek on. Why don't we throw up the Elite Eight on screen just for a quick reminder? You have Brian Dawkins against Reggie White uh, for the best Eagle. You've got Mike Schmidt and Jimmy Rollins for best Philly. You have Eric Lindros and Dr. J rounding out six. So today's tournament is going to be the lower half of the Flyers bracket. It'll be the person that will face Eric Lindros in the best Flyers situation so unfortunately this guy might Arkin not Holmes. make it past eric i'm not just saying uh so it might be a little bit rough but of course to recap what we've done before um with the ho we took a look at ranker.com had a full listing of all the players that played in the city uh for both the flyers sixers phillies and eagles we narrowed that list down based off of three criteria or 16 players based off of three criteria for each team there's a minimum of three years played in the city of Philadelphia or more, starting from 1983 onwards. Uh, and, of course, like production in the field, obviously, if they were a multiple all-star, uh, they won any titles, MVPs, Hall of Famers, things along those lines. And, of course, popularity. Gravitas within the city and with, of course, us three. And so we're making our way to crown the best Philadelphia athlete among the three of us over the last 40 years. So, yeah, it's just been crazy. But why don't we go ahead and get started, guys? What do you say? We dive right into the first round? Nah. Yeah. Nah? Okay. <laughs> uh, we decided, on the we audio decided. side, we're proudly hosted by... Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> you know, we just decided we're not doing two noobs anymore. Yeah, we're, just, we're done. <laughs> we're done. We're out of here. Um, but, okay, here we go. Steve, we're going with the first round. All right. And uh, so this is a very interesting matchup here. We got a 215. 15 seed is Scott Hartnell. Hmm. Pretty good player. Mm-hmm. Going against the two seed, Mark that. Mark Howell is the two seed. Hmm. Hmm. So what are you thinking? You got uh, Mark Howell or Scotty Hartnell? Hmm. I mean, his dad's Gordy. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that helped. And he was a hell of a player. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he mm-hmm. was indeed a hell of a player. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I missed... M- I guess most of that career. <laughs> um, Matt will tell you about it. And I'll do Yeah, there, there you go. But, uh, <laughs> but Scott Hartnell, Scott Hartnell was, uh, you know, a fan favorite. He did some stupid stuff once in a while, threw he a glove at a guy on a breakaway, yeah, fall down. down. But yeah. yeah, but he fell down all the time, but he turned it into a charitable cause. Exactly. And that's, you that's, know. that's Brian Dawkins-esque behavior. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Maybe not the and, falling down part, but the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and he had you know a couple, I think multiple thirty goal seasons. I think. I think so. Yeah, at least one. I yeah. thought. I thought a couple. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was part of that Briere Leno line yeah. that did so well in the twenty ten so uh, Cup playoffs. Yeah, so fun to watch. Um, Good point. And, and he was. He was. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna just for the hell of it. I'm gonna do a fifteen seat up upset because whoa if, if if anybody is gonna throw an upset it's gonna be scotty hartnell it's gonna be scotty hartnell i love it yeah. whoa the two seed is done i love it wow great pick i just i, I like scotty good. hartnell he's a, yeah. he's a good guy and i would agree with i mean mark mark Howe was a tremendous defensive player and Absolutely. Gordy, his father was in you know the spectrum every night you know watching his son play yeah. and was you know just tremendous player but i think we're more like when i think of like this tournament 1983 onwards it's like we're more familiar with scotty hartnell than we are with mark absolutely Howell. absolutely but we love mark Howell too because of what he's done and what it's meant to the flyers so oh, absolutely yeah absolutely 
Great and he's stuff. in he's in the Flyer Hall of Fame. Is he was his number retired? I don't think his number was retired. I don't think his number was retired. He was two? Two. Yeah. His number is retired by the Flyer. Okay. Oh, 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 it must have been recent then. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah relatively recent. Yep. Relatively recent. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. One, two, four, seven, sixteen, and eighty-eight are the numbers that have been retired by the Flyers. So Johnny. No, with all due respect to Mark Howe, I, I yeah. apologize. There but, you go. There you go. But you Scotty know. Hartnell moves on. Love it. All right, John. So here we go. We got a 6 uh, 11 matchup for you. I bring them on. No, I'm kidding. I'm no. <laughs> you got the sixth seed is Simone Gagne. Oh, I love Simone Gagne. And he's going up against the 11 seed, Tim Kerr. Oh. Whoa, two oh, 12s. <laughs> You're talking yeah, about Perry childhood. Closer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Gagne or Kerr? I, I got to go Tim Kerr. I mean, <laughs> that's literally my childhood. Like, wow. Are you kidding me? Really? In front of the net. Wow. Okay. I love Simone Gagne. He's awesome. But yeah, he would, no, not that impact as impactful from 83 for me. Yeah. Tim Kerr was the flyer. Before Lindros, Tim Kerr was the flyer. Okay. And that was the one that you, uh, he's good. He's on our team. Oh, okay. Yeah. Took a beating in front of the net. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, my gosh. I, I, no. I don't even want to know how he gets out of bed in the morning with that. <laughs> they used to beat the crap out of him. Oh, did yeah. He miss, did he miss both the 87 and 85 finals, or was it I just 87? So. I think it was the 87. A little bit of 87, yeah. yeah. He missed 87 for sure. I just wasn't yeah, sure yeah. if he was available in 85, too. Yeah, 87, 88, the year after the cup run, he only played in eight games, three goals, two assists, five points, but he was a hell of a player. 54 goal scorer, four straight years from 83 to 87. 54, 54, 58, 58. Yeah. I mean, that's phenomenal. That is phenomenal stats. Oh, yeah. Um, 650 points in 601 games for the Flyers, just to give you an idea. Over a point a game. Yeah, yeah, over a point a game. So, yeah, he he got beaten up a lot, but, boy, was he a hell of a player. A player. But I would be <sighs> remiss just because he, Simone Gagne is my wife's favorite player. Yeah, like, literally. It's yeah. Simone Gagne. <laughs> and and I, I, I am a huge Simone Gagne fan. Everything he's done, it seemed like every goal he scored was huge. Was huge. Yeah. Every what, single what, one was huge. Cool. It had style. Yeah. He never looked. He never looked like he wasn't supposed to be there. Yeah. Whether it was in front of that, behind the net, <laughs> the passing, dude was just a great player. But yeah. Tim Kerr, Tim Kerr wins just because fifty gold four years in a row. To, you know. Can't ask anybody. Yeah, they were that. they were pretty they, they were pretty good teams. I yeah. love it. We have two major upsets here. This is awesome. John, staying with you though, I don't think this is going to be as a big upset as well. Although. It's a 3-14 matchup, but the 14 seed might give a little bit of run for the money. 14 seed is Brian Prop. The three seed though is Claude Giroux. This is this is hilarious because I don't like Brian Prop at all as really? an announcer or a player. <laughs> but he's going up and, and it's not like Yeah. He did he did his he did his time. Yep. Flyers. No Great hatred. plus minus. And Great hatred. Plus minus. You're going up you're going against the captain. Yeah. Like the captain. Yeah. Like he's he's our he's our only thing after Lindros. Yeah. He's the guy like when he got drafted, it was like, oh shit, we got him. Mm-hmm. And he flat out played his entire so well. career with the Flyers with that kind of just all. Like yeah. he's our captain. Yeah. There's there are players all on this on this team that we remember in that 83 to now, mm -hmm. Lindros, Primo, yep. Giroux. You yep. can't really, you know, you really can't get away from that. So you can't, you can't pick a second line player. <laughs> yeah. 900 points. With the captain. 900 points in a thousand games for the Philadelphia Flyers for Claude Giroux. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Point zero or point nine points per game. That's pretty good. Still you know. Good. Because he's not moving on, I will have to drop my Brian Prop story now. <laughs> Go uh, for it, yeah. Because I played against him in. I've uh, met him in person. It's great. Love I played against him in an alumni game, and I made uh, it quite clear I was not going to stand in front if he was shooting. <laughs> I told everyone on my team that I'm like, I'm not getting in the way. I'm of the not shot. getting in the way of that shot. <laughs> I'm not going to no, do it. He could shoot. Yeah, uh, yeah, he could. Yeah, oh, yeah. 
little bit. Like an NHL player. Yeah. And he lit us up probably for two or three that game. So <laughs> Of course he would, because he's probably pop. He's probably yeah. still in the same condition he was at eighty five. Yeah. Coming off the stroke. You know, he had a stroke coming out mm-hmm. and he's I saw him after he had that stroke and he mm-hmm. was phenomenal. He was in great shape for a guy who went through something like that. Just tremendous. So yeah, great player. Great player for sure. All right, Steve, to close out the first round of the Flyers bracket, you probably have a very, you probably have the most difficult matchup in the first round here. It's a (laughs) 7-10. Okay. And I'd be very curious to see what you have here, uh, what you're going to choose. Seven seed is Danny Briere. Oof. The 10 seed is Keith Primo. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Why didn't you just go to Steve's house and slap him? (laughs) (laughs) I was oh. looking at all of these matchups. That one is real hard. Man. Yeah. Oh. I feel I should have get gotten this one because I'll get heat anyway. <laughs> oh <laughs> man. Hockey stuff, so. Yeah. Oh, can I pat now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this God, is... you named a kid after one of them. Yeah. And, yeah. If, you, and if you didn't pick that name, you probably would have picked the other one. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh man. Yeah. Um Danny Briere, special flyer. Uh, that cup run in 2010, he oh, was amazing. Yeah. Uh, Everything the Flyers could have ever hoped for. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. You know, and that he is really the heart and soul of that 2010. Quick story about Danny Briere. When Danny Briere signed with with the mm-hmm. with the Flyers that day, I bought the jersey. Yep. <laughs> like and it was yeah. delivered three weeks later. Like I was so excited when yeah. you like. I've never. I don't do that for. Yeah. You know, for agent signings, I normally wait a year or two. I don't. But Danny Brea, I was so oh, excited. My, yeah. Oh my God, we got him! Like I but, need the jersey. You know the the funny part about that was I actually wanted one of the other guys, either oh, really? Curry or Gomez, because I thought they yeah. were bigger. They were gonna, you know, be, right, we, we, to we last. talked about that during that time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, but I'm, I'm never been more happy to be wrong. Mm. Um, you were, you weren't really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> They're all pretty good. Now well, Gomez kind of turned to crap after that. Oh, well, it's a devil so, system. Yeah, right. But the um, Dan, Danny Briere 08 run was good. The 10 run was phenomenal just phenomenal uh he was still huge in the 12 series against Mm -hmm. the penguins um just a small guy who could dart in and out of places and and amazing touch and hands around the net yeah uh but keith primo there's a reason i named my son after him yeah uh the captain the 2004 playoff run oh i was actually thinking about this today the 2004 Flyers team is probably the best one they've had since '87. Yeah, I would I not argue. I would not argue with you on that. Yeah, and Primo led the way, and even Phil Esposito, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the famous Phil Esposito, who remarked, hates us. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> remarked that Primo put together one of the most incredible playoff runs he had ever seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I would like to think that it could have ended in a cup if we hadn't run out of defensemen. Yep. Um, for and one. Just, just for people who don't know who Phil Esposito is, his, his brother was Tony Esposito, probably one of the best goalies that ever played. Mm-hmm. So if he's, if he's saying that someone had a pretty good season or a pretty good playoff run, he, he might have seen some things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And he scored the five overtime uh, goal. And oh, but this is tough. Yeah. Oh, I yes, got it. Is. Yes, it is. And only one advances. I, I'm going to advance Primo. Okay. Wow. The 04, as as magical as Danny Briere's 2010 run was, mm. he, his, he would just sort of come out of nowhere and score a goal. Mm-hmm. Keith Primo's 2004 run was similar in terms of like, getting key points but he was knocking three dudes over as he was yeah. getting to the net it was a ice time a great player yeah. ice time was he was logging the most minutes being the captain oh, yeah. being yeah. the guy like not only the offense, offense but wasn't, defensive Briere responsibility was, yeah, yeah. Briere was great 
But Bear wasn't the guy on that team. Like, yeah. Primo was the guy on that 0-4 team. Yeah, he was. such a great point. Wow, a lot of upsets in the first round. That's that's phenomenal, guys. Love it. So, Steve, sticking with you in the second nice. round, you've got the 11 seed, Tim Kerr, but he's going against Claude Giroux, the three seed. Oh, it's it's Giroux. It's Giroux. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. So we've already been over the stats. He, he did me the favor – of scoring the game-winning goal, uh, overtime goal in game three of the 2010 mm. final on my birthday while I was stuck in Chicago arguing a case. Uh, nice. Uh, there you go. Nice. Yeah. So he he at least ended my birthday happily. There you go. Uh, Such a great call one. by Mike Emmerich, too, if you ever go. We'll throw that in the card in the upper right oh. corner. It was. And Such after, I don't remember, I don't think he was the sco- one who scored it, but they were denied an overtime goal mm. earlier in that same game because yeah. it's – shoddy review but yeah uh but that one it's mm. it's, it's <laughs> that, that's just the nhl it's drew shoddy. has been drew has been the flyer over the last 12 years yeah. i don't i don't mm-hmm. think you could say tim kerr was the same exactly no, no yeah i agree exactly uh john for you second round it <laughs> the 10 seed keith primo the 15 seed scott hartnell <laughs> Friggin' named his kid after him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sit here and argue. Yeah. Was better than. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, yeah. I mean, we just waxed out. What you guys named Keith? Yeah, we knew that was coming. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah. Well, we thought we made history with the lowest C going to the Sweet 16. It's now Keith Primo, which I was suspecting was going to be him in the in the in this round, but. Gents, as we head to the Sweet 16, to this guy is going to now face Eric Lindros. This is coming out of the Skate Zone region of the best Philadelphia athlete. Who is it going to be? Claude Giroux. The funniest Keith thing is now, if Primo. we all type the captain in there, is it a tie? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good question. It's a very good question. Um, but yeah, boy. I was wondering if there were going to be first round upsets, and there were. There were. There definitely were. I felt like we hadn't had enough, and I thought Scott Hartnell was in a good position to make one. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, oh heck that's, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Claude Giroux or Keith Primo? All right. Can I have a vote in? All right. I'm sending you a picture. Right? <laughs> I had to make it complicated. I'm sending right. you both a picture because it just it says it all. <laughs> it says my choice completely, a hundred percent. We already have a majority opinion, of course, so that's just really cool. We're waiting on John's poster. I'm coming here. That didn't work out. I don't... Oh, there it is. But I <laughs> can I screenshot it? It's gonna be interesting to see like how this person is gonna come and face Eric Lindros. Oh my gosh. Tall order. It is a tall order, literally and figuratively. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Primo has the size to compete with. Lindros. He sure does. Yeah. yeah. Twin towers. Yeah. Exactly. But you got Giroux, who can do whatever. He can dangle with the best of them. Absolutely. Oh yeah, he can. What's going on up there, Johnny? I'm just, you know. <laughs> he's just it dragging it out, stretching. <laughs> oh, the producer's in his ear, going stretch it out, stretch it out. You you took too too short a time on the Hartnell Primo one. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm assuming John. I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm assuming that you would probably agree with Steve and me. Oh, here we go. Yeah, oh yeah. Unanimous selection. Claude Giroux will face Eric Lindros in the Elite Eight, guys, and. Uh, a thousand games, nine hundred points, captain for so many years of the Flyers. Um, can't ask for anybody better than Giroux, I don't think. You know, we miss you, G. Lower bracket. Yeah, we miss him. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. We yeah. hate our GM because you're gone. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We will continue until you come back. <laughs> if and when he does. Hey, oh, he gets to he gets to play with a pretty good talent. Uh, up he'll, be back. he'll be back uh, as soon as the career's over. He'll be back. He'll he's a flyer for life. Yeah, yeah, he'll be in the Flyers Hall of Fame for sure. Absolutely, oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, we'll flash up the Elite Eight on screen, and now we have Reggie White, Brian Dawkins, Mike Schmidt, Jimmy Rollins, Eric Lindros, Claude Giroux, Doctor J, 
the only one that's left out of the Sixers, but we've got the Sixers bracket coming in two weeks, I think. Yep. And then we talk Elite Eight, gents, after that. And oh my. Yes. This is where it gets lost. got hit by a foul ball. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So that's it, gents. That ends episode number 96 of Two Noobs Talking. It's always great to talk with you guys uh, at a late bewitching hour. Ha 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 ha. Matt makes plans. He's got a life and stuff. I, I got life and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's called going to bed. Is what I'm, I'm having doing. a life, Matt. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as always, John, who do we uh, who do we thank and who do we uh, go to? Like, well, we thank Steve and Matt for doing all the work, and then I, oh, yeah. I, I draw a little squiggly lines. Okay. There you go. Where can um, people find us on two news, man? We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Clapper. Um, anything else I can get my grubby little hands on to put these short little videos that Steve puts up on Facebook for us every day after we do these episodes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that goes to our main YouTube channel, of course. That's our Two Noobs Talking Podcast. We really love it, of course. If you like, share, subscribe, get notified when our our episodes drop. And, of course, they drop Wednesdays at 7 Eastern. Audibly, you can also find us, Steve, where? Didn't I do this already? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's oh. a joke. But now you got to do it. I got to do it for real now. Damn. Where are we at again? Glenn, where do we go? <laughs> iHeartRadio. Oh, yeah. So we're proudly hosted by Podbean who spreads us out like tentacles on an octopus to things like iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Pandora, Spotify. Um, yeah. All hey, if you want, want to say it's not a tentacles on an octopus, it's more like the ninja variant of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Just comes out of nowhere. There you go. For no reason. All right, guys. Well, that ends episode 96 of Two Noobs. It's on to 97 next Ooh, week. Ooh, the guys. JR episode. Yeah. Uh, we can oh, talk yeah. about that dude for an hour. That will be great. I love, <laughs> that guy. I love that guy so much. Absolutely. <laughs> Until then, guys, talk to you all next week. Take care. If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. That's a great question. What is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore.